Hello everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Board Gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking about my 5 favorite innovative games. Before I get started, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at all my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On all of those you'll be able to chat with me and interact with myself as well as my channel in all sorts of really fun and interesting ways. Now that said, I'm talking about innovative games and specifically what I wanted to mention with this are games that have some kind of unique or interesting mechanic that they brought to the um, brought to the gaming world. So an example of this that isn't on my list would be something like Dominion with deck building. Before Dominion came out there really wasn't anything like that. You can also look at something like Settlers of Catan that had a lot of different mechanics that it managed to meld together that before that it happened really weren't around and not only that but Catan was really a mainstream one. So I'm really curious what you guys have to say about this. What are some of your favorite innovative games and why do you really enjoy them? Just as another really quick honorable mention, one of my favorite games is Captain Sonar, right? And so you have that really real-time team-based thing going on. Granted, other games like Space Alert had done real-time, but Captain Sonar just did it in a different way. So just to give you an idea of the types of games that I'm talking about, but as always, you guys know I love to hear from you and what your opinions are on this. What do you consider to be an innovative game? Do you consider it to be one that is completely new and different? Do you consider it to be one that changes the formula enough to make it fresh and unique. Let me know anything and everything you think about this in the comments below. As always, you guys know I love to hear from you. But with that, we're going to get started with my number five. At number five, I've got Sulk In, the Mayan Calendar. This is a relatively standard worker placement game that plays very well and is a really good, well-designed game. The really fun, innovative thing about this, though, is the way that the calendar functions. It's kind of neat because instead of like with most worker placement games where you place the person and then you pick them up and you get whatever the thing is, in this game you have an actual physical gear that you're turning and that represents the movement, not the movement, but it represents the... Um, progression of the game from round to round and as you're doing that then your workers are physically moving along little gears so that you can go and potentially get better stuff more resources better resources anything along those lines so it's a really cool and interesting thing and I had never seen anything quite like it so I was really excited to do it not to mention the fact that they implemented it in a really fun and interesting way and tied it with this with the theme in an absolutely beautiful way but with that so in is my number five. At number four, I've got Dead of Winter. Really solid cooperative game with a interesting trader mechanic. You've got a lot of different potential play or uh, characters that you can play as, and you're going and you're trying to essentially survive a zombie apocalypse. The really unique thing that Dead of Winter brought up is this crossroads thing. So the crossroads idea is something that's specific to Plaid Hat games, and they're using the crossroads mechanic in several different themes. So it started off with Dead of Winter, and now they're doing, I think they're doing a space one as well. I'm not sure if it's been released already, but it's that thing that I really found innovative and very unique and fun. With the idea being that as you're playing your turn, you have one of the players next to you essentially looking at a card and seeing if specific conditions have been met. If those conditions have been met, then the player says, oh, this thing occurs, then they read whatever the card says, and then you as the current player have to make a decision. That's where the crossroads comes into play. You either go left or right, you do A or B, and typically it means that you'll lose resources or health or something along those lines, but maybe you're helping a person and you get a new ally or you get more resources out of it. Something along those lines. There's all sorts of different stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Um, that said, it's a little bit lower on the list like Sulkin because it took a, a mechanic that was already there and, and just made it better. It's not bad by any means, but we've seen cooperative with a trader. We've seen worker play placement as with Silken, but both of these games just really added a little bit of oomph and fun to it. And I'm really excited to see what the space one does for Dead of Winter with this crossroads mechanic and also to see it in other Plat Hat games as well. But with that Dead of Winter and specifically the crossroads mechanic is my number four. 
And number three, I've got Mystic Veil. This is an interesting fantasy-themed card-playing game, essentially. And the unique aspect with this is that you're not playing just any cards. You are actually sitting there and building up your card. So normally you say, I play this card, and the card says what it does. But in this case, you have semi-transparent -tra card pieces that you're laying down, and you layer them on top of one another to essentially build up a singular card that does whatever it does. So it's kind of cool in that way. There are other games that do things somewhat similar to this. So something like Small World comes to mind where you're actually building up your species and you say what it can do and that kind of thing. Evolution does something similar. But I like Mystic Veil vale in that you're not just playing these cards to make something unique, but rather you're actually building up the cards, and the cards are the unique thing. So it's kind of interesting in that way, but that said, it's not exactly groundbreaking and earth-shattering and all that kind of stuff, but it is definitely different and innovative and fun, and so that's why it's a little bit higher up on this list. Mystic Veil, vale, my number three. And number two, I've got Vast, the Crystal Caverns. The reason that this one is on the list is one word, asymmetry. Asymmetry has been around for quite a while in games where you've got good versus bad, team A versus team B. Um, you've got asymmetrical starting powers, characters that you can play as, all sorts of different stuff. But Vast took it to 11, where essentially in this game you have multiple games inside of the game because not only do you have different characters that you can play as but each individual character has their own specific goals and ideas of what they want to do what they need to collect how they need to collect it how they interact with their fellow players and what they just need to do in the game and it's often completely different and they can normally take vastly different actions even and all this kind of stuff so it's a really different game every time you play it if you're playing as the different individual characters. So it's really fun, and you guys know that one thing I'm all about with board gaming is replayability. And Vast does a wonderful job of including replayability in it because it means that you can play as multiple things. You can play each one several times, one of the, each one of them one time, doesn't really matter, but you get a lot uh, of bang for your buck, essentially. So Vast is my number two. And number one, I've got Time Stories. This may come as a surprise to some of you, but not to others. Now, most of you probably know that I am a huge fan of Time Stories. I really do love this game. Specifically, I love the narrative aspect of it. There are a lot of games that do narrative storytelling. You've got like Mice and Mystics, Descent, a lot of these sort of, not roll and move, but exploration type games. But the way that Time Stories approaches narrative gameplay and overarching storylines and can continuing um, collections and all these kinds of things is just so unique and absolutely enthralling. I really, really love it. So not only does each of the sort of modules of this game have their own unique people, their own unique mechanics, their own unique storyline, but everything within each individual module also feeds an overarching storyline for the entirety of the game. And that is what I find to be absolutely incredible and tremendously fun. Now granted, things like Risk Legacy and Pandemic Legacy did this in terms of you're permanently changing the board and all that kind of thing. With Time Stories, you are keeping specific cards and all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm obviously not going too into it to avoid spoiling it, but um, through different modules you'll have certain cards that say keep this with you permanently and stuff along those lines. So it's really cool in that sense because not only do you have the individual amazingly presented narrative storytelling, but you have some modules, some narrative modules that are more combat heavy, others that are more social or puzzle heavy, and all these kinds of things, and it just works so well in an incredibly fun and integrative way and the entirety of the game is really innovative and that's why it's number one on this list it's it's just tremendously fun took a lot of really cool and fun aspects from other narrative games as well as persistent games and put them all into one wonderful package time stories my number one
Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video of my top five favorite innovative games. Now, again, I had a few that sort of took a well-known um, mechanic and made it a bit different or a bit more unique. And then I had a few that really introduced or completely revamped the idea of some mechanic. And as always, I'm really curious what you guys have to say. What do you guys think about innovative games in general? Do you like trying them out? Do you enjoy trying new things? Do you try to wait until you see some reviews about it or maybe try somebody else's copy or are you somebody who just like dives in feed first and on top of that are you somebody who prefers something that's more innovative and changes the formula or just reutilizes the formula in a in a really good and well done way you guys know I love hearing from you let me know any and all of your thoughts in the comments below but with that thank you very very much for watching again I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time